everyone, it's Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails 21. So let's get right to it. This first email is sent by Vlado, V-L-A-D-O, and he says, Hello, for a long time, follow videos on Flatland. I'm guessing English is not his first language, but we won't hold that against him. And I must admit that I am convinced that the Earth is flat. In fact, when I try to explain to others that we live on a flat Earth, come to ridicule me because I do not have the answers to everything. In fact, if you can help me to prove that the satellite dishes do not, two of the satellites do not exist because when you look at the houses have satellite dishes all facing in the same direction at the same angle as me and confuses. Publish your videos as soon as it has come more to the awareness of people to wake up. Good luck, Vlado Turkic, T-U-R-C-I-C. Well, Vlado, yeah, when it comes to the dishes up there, no doubt they are pointing at something. Are they pointing at satellites? I highly doubt it. I think they're pointing at something up there, though. Is it a physical object like a NASA balloon or some sort of re repeat transmitter balloon? Very possible. Uh, could it also be pointing at a signal that is bouncing off the firmament or dome? Also possible. But I do not believe in satellites. Not, not f for all the money in the world right now. So thank you for that. Email from, who is this one from? Arthur, hi Mark, it's Arthur. I sent you a screenshot of my game Clash of Clans on Google Games. This game is played every day around the world, no pun intended. Ha, ah, I see what you did there. But yeah, I figured I get attacked three to four times a day on this game and people from all over the world will have no choice but to see and wonder themselves into looking uh, into it or just giggle either way a small way to implant the idea call it a flat earth inception if you may feed them the idea and let the curiosity do the rest peace and strength my friend and William Cooper has an excellent video on the moon's gravity one of my favorites I think it's just called moon hoax by William Cooper same guy who wrote the book beyond a pale horse so thank you Arthur for that and yeah if anyone wants to go in and do something inside a game put flat earth just put flat earth anywhere you can what he did was he made a, an entire garrison that spelled out flat earth and i'm hopefully i included this in the slideshow so chris writes if i can actually get the screen in front of me hi okay flat earth theory i've watched some interesting ideas here no one wants no one wants to know this do they it's too mind-blowing while i'm interested in new ideas i've experienced extraordinary events i have trouble with this i'm sure you do too which is of course is reasonable firstly nature's perfect shape is a sphere so it well i mean you could say it's the perfect shape but is it the perfect shape honestly from a machine standpoint a square is a perfect shape because squares don't like thinking in circles. So it's the perfect shape, I think, is more of an opinion, kind of like the, the perfect ice cream flavor is vanilla. Like, well, it's it's more versatile, but is it, you know, it's, anyway. Uh, I've experienced extraordinary events. I have trouble with this. I'm sure you do too, which is, of course is reasonable. Firstly, nature's perfect shape is a sphere, so it stands to reason most planets will form in relation to this, if, if you believe in planets, of course. Even though nature, as we call it, is probably more associated with Earth as in Mother Nature and maybe God, however, the anomalies presented with flat Earth cannot be discarded. But one must come to the conclusion that if, in essence, Earth is indeed flat, then someone built it. Or are we just an experiment? The Truman Show? Jim Carrey, of course, is more than he seems. I'm in questioning mode about this. Extraterrestrial driven, maybe? Do we really need to know? Hell yes. Yours intriguingly, Chris McLeod. Uh, I don't know if there's an overall question in here other than people have a hard time with this. Yes, they do. And it's, it's somebody mentioned to me recently that it's like having you, you being grown up and then having your parents tell you that you were adopted. It, it's that sort of sort of impact on your life. This next email is from Renato Stupar, R-E-N-A-T-O-S-T-U-P-A-R. -E uh, hello, my name is Renato. I'm from, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this, O-S-I-J-E-K, Croatia. I just watched your video about Flat Earth videos was deleted 
from YouTube last night. I checked it a few minutes ago there, and there is shown 7 million results, just letting you know. I believe the truth. God bless. Cheers from Croatia. And yeah, when you go in and search for Flat Earth and YouTube, it will fluctuate. Right now, it will lean towards 4 million, but sometimes you'll see it jump up to 7 million for no apparent reason. If you want the accurate numbers, you type in Flat Earth and then you search by upload date. It should be right now, as of today, 15 million. Although I have seen it jump from 15 down to 2. I've seen some weird, weird fluctuations. They're playing with the numbers. I think still think they're trying to curb the enthusiasm. So thank you for letting me know. And you get people that are putting in the comments. Yes, of course you'll see it. But it shouldn't be 7 million at all. It should be 15 million. We should be on track with the Beatles and Gangnam Style and Fox News. We're, we're, we're on par with all those groups right now. Uh, the, the ones that I talked about last year and we should be tracking much, much higher. So again, if you want the accurate numbers, flat earth, sort by upload date, it should be 15 million. If it's not, if it's much, much lower, uh, then they finally close that gap. But either way, I'm gonna continue on with this. Next email is from Sam. And this uh, was written to me and Jonathan from Jersey at the same time. He must have been watching an old episode. Dear Mark and John from Jersey, my name is Sam Franklin Jones. I'm 30 years old, and ever since I was six, I've been fascinated with the stars and everything space-related. I would get excited when I heard we had sent a new special probe out to space, and I've always had my heart set on seeing a rocket launch with the thought that uh, it was sending astronauts up into space to help mankind understand more about the universe. However, like all people, I avoided the flatter theory and when my dad said there were still people that believe the earth is flat, I downright said they are idiots. I am a fan of conspiracy theories, and this is how I eventually decided to give this topic a go, which I have noticed how a lot of other people have got into this as well. Your Flat Earth clues, along with your shows with John and all of your guests, slowly made me become obsessed with the Flat Earth, and it is all I can talk about at work. <laughs> That's smart. As you can imagine, this has been greeted with laughter and criticism. I'm not saying the earth is flat and I'm not saying it is round. I am open to the both, but with the idea that it could also be round, but with more land to it that we are told. And this is why we can see further than we should be able to the Chicago skyline, for example. I believe NASA has lied about many things. The moon landing for one, spacewalks, blue screen, green screen, and also that awful animatronics video where the astronaut turns his head on a spacewalk. That, that's awesome. Max Malone was the, the guy that found that great video. I do. In fact, I think it's on my short list in uh, my YouTube channel, Mark K. Sargent. It's, uh, it's called Flat Earth Shortlist for New People. I think that, that Max Malone video is in there. I do have one main question which is holding me off on saying I am that I am 100% sure the Earth is flat, and that is the gyroscope. I have heard many people say that if we was on a globe, then during flight we would have to adjust our altitude. As I'm aware, this would not be the case if you take gravity. Here you go. That's that. That's the reason you're, you're not letting go is because you still, you're still buying into the science concept of gravity because that's what he says here. You take gravity into consideration. As you move around the world, the gyroscope would remain level because gravity has a force on the center of the gyroscope and it is our own actions on the mechanism that affect the roll. That's why this guy is having problems because he's still holding on to the he, he still believe he has to. it's not just that we are told what the shape of the earth is we also are told everything about it in regards to physics and you gotta let go of it all including gravity i'm not saying gravity doesn't exist i'm saying that they can't explain it very well either so the interpretation of gravity, which he's throwing he's basically trying to do both he's saying hey, the earth is flat but the science concept of gravity is conflicting with with my idea that it's flat so i'm not a scientist and he says i'm not a scientist in any way but the only way i can explain my query is that if the earth was flat completely no mountains or hills and we had a gyroscope and held it level and ran it uh in a straight line nothing would happen this is if gravity doesn't exist never said if you put in gravity and ran it in a straight line you would get the same results if the earth was round and you didn't have gravity then as you ran in a straight line, then because the mechanism would start to move, so would the gyroscope and you would have to tilt it to keep it level. Now add in gravity on a globe and no matter how far you went, the gyroscope would not move and it would 
only be our actions that would affect it. I hope I've explained myself correctly. I've added images to this email to better help explain my question. Please, could you clear this up? Or maybe I've gone and thrown the idea up in the air a little. Who knows? Either way, I love your shows and will continue to prove the flat earth where I can. All the best. Sam from Hertfordshire, England. Yes, yeah, Sam. Give up the old concept of gravity. You can't have both. You cannot listen to mainstream science when it comes to this and believe the flat earth. You, you can't You can't have both. Uh, let's see here. Going through more. This one's from Robert. Hi, Mark. My name is Rob Nosnitz from Sydney, Australia. I have come up with an experiment to prove either globe or flat earth theory. There needs to be two teams of travelers, one leaving from Punta Arenas, Chile, and the other leaving from Macquarie Island, Australia. Both travel at the same time directly south to meet at the South Pole. If it is a globe, then the two should meet up eventually at the South Pole. But if it is indeed a flat Earth, then due to the two starting locations being on the opposite side of the plane, the two teams will never meet. Oh, that's good. This is feasible experiment and can be tested because both starting places actually charter trips to the South Pole for the public. Uh, that's a little dicey because all charter trips are going to rely on the GPS system and the uh, the authorities maps when it comes to the south pole also another experiment can be done using a ship to circumnavigate antarctica if you head east around the perimeter of the globe theory i know this one you should always be adjusting to the stern right of the ship as antarctica uh, should be an island continent but on the flat earth model you will be adjusting to the port left side of the ship as you follow the coast all the way around the plane heading east while on the topic of Antarctica in the southern hemisphere's summer around Christmas for a couple of weeks each year, the sun does not set and there's 24 hours of sunlight. Says who? Watch some, some of the videos from Jaronism and David Weiss and others. You, you'll know that's not true. I can understand on the FE model how this is possible in the northern hemisphere's summer as the North Pole is the center of the FE. But Antarctica is meant to be surrounding the whole FE perimeter. So how could it be possible for the entirety of Antarctica to have sunlight at the same time? I've been trying to think about it from an FE perspective that would still be fooling everyone into believing in the globe, but this topic has stumped me and I haven't heard anyone from the FE community answer this question. I have seen Chris Pontius's FE model and this cannot explain it. Well, no, Chris Pontius's model is not going to explain it. Could they just illuminate the perimeter or have multiple suns down there? Possibly an explanation for multiple sun pictures from Antarctica labeled as Planet X Nibiru. Now you're getting warmer. Please help me with this problem as I know that has to be a solution. Looking forward to hearing your response from Robert Nosnitz. Yes, look up any of the Antarctica videos that either DITRH has done or Jaronism. Those are the first two I would look at. And if those don't help you, let me know and I will see if I can come up with some more people. Uh, let's see. This one's called, Hey Man, Love the Work. It's from Casey. Hey Mark, just wanted to say I love what you are doing. I've only been following the flatter theory for a few weeks. Despite some ridicule from friends, I'm definitely on board mainly because of your videos. I just had a few questions about your radio broadcast. Is the show just on Tuesday nights and how can I access it? I wasn't sure how you were linked to TFR. The website uh, just has a guy named Zach. Just has a guy named Zach? For now, I've just been listening to your posted shows on YouTube, although I can't find many. Wow, where are you looking? Anyway, man, hoping to start calling in and listening live, but until then, keep it keep it up. Casey Dodson, 25 years old, Tennessee. I will also email him because I got a funny feeling he's he's missing he's missing these Q and A shows as well. But for everyone's out there, TFR True Frequency Radio, that is the station that I do Strange World on. And that show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And has a whole bunch of other shows. Jaronism's on there. Rob Skiba's on there. Zen Garcia's on there. And then we have opponents that are against Flat Earth on there. Like Zachary Hubbard. He's on that network. He's against Flat Earth. Chris Everard. He is on that network also against Flat Earth. So there's a lot of activity on that network. Very, very interesting. So I will, I will email this guy and I will tell him all this stuff as well. So thank you for asking those questions and hopefully I can get to him pretty quick because that was a few days ago. This one's from Ron. Ron says, Hi Mark, French is my speaking language, so please excuse any mistakes. Recently retired, I have found myself free and available to do the contrary of what the elites want, this being informing myself. 
after having a very good idea of what they have manufactured and how gullible a public we've become, well, very little more I, I thought could surprise me. But this was until I saw your post. I must agree I laughed at this at first and truly never bought, never thought, never bought, thought I would give it any of my time even with plenty of it on hand. Truth is your facts are troubling. I am totally depressed. I have a great many different emotions towards this issue, but please don't be concerned. I can handle it. What I do need are answers and many of them. I tried your number, at, but understandably got your voicemail. If you find the time to answer this email simply by saying hello, I will gladly begin discussions with you on this issue. Lastly, well, people like yourselves are an inspiration. Thank you. You know what? I'm going to email that guy back just in case he missed that show. And I say, uh, yeah, I'll say hello. This one's from Thomas. Dear Mark, my father brought me into the Flat Earth Club when I was just a child. I'm now 67. He took me to the local airport and introduced me to several pilots and one stewardess who was a licensed pilot who were all Flat Earthers and were friends of the family. I have enclosed several pictures of my new license plate to share with you and your audience. Keep up the good work, Thomas. And this is, you guys probably already seen it. I've used it as a thumbnail. It is the license plate from Maryland. Really kind of a flashy, like the colors on the Maryland license plate. And if anyone wants to send me their screenshots of their license plate, I will use it in the slideshow. I will use it in the thumbs. I will use it in the special slideshows for license plates. And appreciate everyone that's spreading the word out there because what can you do with a personalized license plate with six, seven, or eight letters? I use seven letters and on my car, it's, it's flat. Eight letters, you can go, it is flat. You can do flat earth, abbreviate certain things, FLT instead of flat, E-R-T-H instead of earth. Come up with, you know, somebody's doing one called no curve, like that one. I think if you can get away with it, uh, no globe would be a good one too. Don't know if anyone's thinking of that. All sorts of fun things. Be creative. Come up with some fun, some fun stuff. But thank you, Thomas, and much appreciated that you sent in the plates. This one is from James, the third secret and flat earth. Mark, flat earth and the third secret of Fatima are in no doubt connected. It was to be told to the people of the world in 1960. And that's about right. Same time frame as the creation of NASA. Yep, NASA was created in 1958. It was said the, the secret would be understood only at that time. My guess, it was to destroy the global lie. Jim, otherwise known as an Ar Arkansas truther, Send from my iPhone. And yeah, uh, Jim, thank you for that. True. Anyone wants to look up the, the miracle of the sun and the, the three secrets of Fatima? What is the third secret? I think the third secret, the, the rumor has, is it that the third secret of Fatima was so powerful that the Pope read it and realized he could not release it to the public. And Again, like the Great Deception, can you think of anything more that would hit people, that would gut punch the psyche of our civilization more than finding out the Earth wasn't a globe? I don't think so. So, again, are they related? I, I would, oh, man, it would be really cool if they were. So, thanks, Jim. Uh, let's see here. This one's from Rune. Hey, Mark. My, my name is Chris. I love how the emails are completely different from the actual names. I have re I've really only been a flat earther for eight weeks, but I'm all in. Still heavy into the conspiracy theories, though. I had sent you an email a few weeks ago, but it was all garbage at this point. I was still a moon believer and an atheist, hmm. but I've changed. Now esoteric things take a much bigger role in our existence. I watched the movie Split today by M. Night Shyamalan. It was amazing, and I would venture a video will be popping up soon regarding it. Definitely an amazing watch if you get the time. Anyway, thanks for your work. You are doing a service for everyone. Thank you, Chris. Uh, this one's from James. Just saw your Flat Earth video. I hope you have the right, this, I have the right email. I took a pic back in 2015. Seem a chemtrail cast a shadow on the sky seemed odd to me. Yeah, I've seen some chemtrail pictures as well. I've seen live video where rockets are flying and there's a sh black shadow in front of them. Those are really creepy as well. Anyone has some interesting stuff to send me, send them. That's not chemtrail with a shadow. Pretty cool. Is it tied to flat earth? Eh, maybe, maybe, but I'm, I'm not going to dwell on it too much. 
This one's from Steve. It's called My Mind is Blown. Hello, Mark. I've always been open to a good conspiracy theory, but the flat earth thing used to make me roll my eyes and chuckle. One day, a few weeks ago, while watching a Sandy Hook Boston Marathon false flag video on YouTube, I saw your link on the sidebar. See, that's how it happens right there. You get recommended for things that aren't even related. Sandy Hook, recommended for you, flat earth. What? And said, what the hell? Let me see what this guy has to say. Three hours later, I was questioning the globe. Outstanding. It warms my heart. It really does. With my Bible open to Genesis, taking it word for word at face value, all I can say is, oh my God, I think it's flat. Keep up the good work. I commend you on your courage and persistence on this subject. Steve O'Donnell from Saugus, S-A-U-G-U-S, Massachusetts. Thanks for that. This email's called Brilliant. Could be British. Here is a hi Mark. Here's a brilliant new video on the flat earth. I'm not sure why the personal attack on you and your site, nor do I know the history between the both of you. I think he's talking about Eric Dubay. Nevertheless, it is a fantastic video. It would be great if you could mend the fences. Oh, yeah, there it is. And reach out to Eric and have him on your show. You could throw in Jaronism and have a round table for one of the ages. Anyhow, hope you are well. Cheers, Jeffrey. Yeah, I don't, Eric will, will, of course, have a role to play as this thing moves forward. No question. He's got the most subscribers of any flat earther right now. He has a whole, in fact, he's got the, I think, the highest view count for his channel. He's got more hits on his channel than anybody else. Although, if Jaronism actually put flat earth in the title of his videos, he might be able to even leapfrog Eric at this point because Jaron's, closing in on his view count as well but eric is kind of a one-man show right now he's he didn't he's not really allying himself with anybody i don't has he collaborated how many people has he collaborated with uh odd uh, he reached out to my perspective for a while but that's about it everybody else he's really distanced himself from others i mean he's got a he's got an enemies list and there's a lot of prominent flat earth people on it so I'm I'm hoping that one day he'll he'll want to play nice with others, but we'll see. I I don't know. He's he's got some other things he's got to deal with, and you know who knows what's going on in his head. I I don't I don't know. I will. I have reached out to him. However, he and I have ever never actually emailed. We've never talked to each other on the phone. I, the rumor has it that I actually talked to him once during a roundtable, and he came in as a different person or anonymously, and I didn't know who it was. But that was back in 2015. So, I, but I again, I got no real problem with the guy other than he's still attacking specific demographic groups. Hopefully, he will pull away from that because of the the, the flatter theory. If the whole concept of flat earth is a unification for humanity for our civilization then that's it it's an absolute meaning you can't unify our civilization and attack another group you can't have both at the same time but you know i can go on for that i'm, I'm not i'm not going to keep going let's move on paul writes Mark, love what you do. Here's an idea for others to show support for the cause. I ran a line of green duct tape across the back window, see pick below, to represent the flat earth. Easy to do. I got the idea from support police where you run a line of blue painter's tape instead. When you see that you are not alone out there, it makes it easier to go through this process. There is a power in a united logo. Keep it flat, Paul. You're correct. I don't know if doing stuff on your car, doing stuff in your car, is going to help you that much, because there's not going to be a lot of flat earthers who's going to pull each other over. And yeah, I mean, you might see somebody at a parking lot with a green stripe on it, but it'd be better if you were wearing something. I, I like the idea. I do, but it'd be better if you were wearing something like a like a little pin, something that would designate you. That was something that was brought up to me at the flat earth social event here in Sioux, Canada where a, a, a wonderful woman just just came up with this like a, a designator so people we could identify each other that's because i think you're walking past flat earthers all the time in the street and you don't know because they look like everybody else not that we're sort of weird or anything but uh, that so yeah, if anyone wants to come up with a, a flat earth pin a super cheap couple buck flat earth pin you'd be buy in china i don't care if it's an a map or fe or whatever it is something cool 
that sticks out that everyone can kind of agree on and then we everybody endorses at the same time we all start wearing them that's how this thing really moves forward other than if outside of mainstream that is this email is from norman it says to let me start this email with the thanks for the videos you make an opportunity to send a message late 2016 on my birthday in september i was a globe man myself and always was watching nasa stuff anything to do with space and had passion for all that, especially about planetary travel. Sitting there watching Water on Mars video and autoplay started a suggested video of a man talking about this subject and I didn't think much of it while I was not interested. As I was about to change it, some things he was talking about had me laughing. As a curious man, I left it on and wanted to hear more jokes. That's good. Needless to say, by the end of the one hour video, things I thought I had knowledge about had me doing my own research every day since then. There you go. Do your own research. Ask questions. Took me many restless nights after work verifying the information that all the videos I seen were credible. So after going on NASA.gov, all the lies were there for anyone to read. And yet, how can people deny? I since then have been bringing up the subject to everyone I know to random people in the street. Oh boy. We're going to lock this guy up. I may be seen as crazy, but the truth is I always spoke my mind and never worried about that. So for what it's worth, keep up the good work, Norman. Thanks, Norman. That's awesome. Pamela writes, Chemtrails, hi. have been watching some of your videos. I'm wondering what your take on chemtrails are. Is it to kill off the millions of people so the dome can be left alone? Alludes to the world getting smaller because we are growing. Joy to you, Pamela. She's a nutritional health coach. Yeah, Pamela, I believe in, in chemtrails. I do think they're real. Do, does anybody have an idea of what they actually are in relation to the flat earth? There is massive speculation there. And I, I can't pick one because I don't really have a favorite. Do I think it's a poison that's killing us quickly? No, because people aren't dropping in the fields. Do I think it's tied to Morgellons disease or Morgellons disease or however you pronounce it? Maybe. Is it obscuring the sky? Is it helping? Con uh, is it a conductor material that's helping part of the illusion? I, uh, is it helping the holograms or whatever is being projected? I don't know. Uh, but is it real? Yes. Uh, chemtrails are absolutely real. But to date, no one has been able to pin down exactly. We may not know to the end what the chemtrails are for. Bigger question would be, when did the chemtrails start? When did people really start? And I'm not going to look it up right now. When did, when did the chemtrails start? Tying that date to what had been going on, what, you know, what was significant about when they started, when people started noticing them, that would probably be a, a clue to look at. Esteban writes, I hope it's Esteban. Nope, it's Alma. The emails never match up. The email names almost never match up to the person that's writing it. I have no idea why. So you know what? I'm not going to even read. I'm just going to I'm, I'm going to open up the email. And I'm going to read the title of the email. I'm never going to read from the email that, that, that's posted there again. I just can't because I get, get burned all the time. Hi, Mark. I am so happy that I finally got to email you. I've been wanting to contact you for the longest time. Thank you for all your work and for being so accessible. YouTube recommended a Flat Earth video to me back around July of 2015, and I have to admit my brain immediately dismissed, and I thought, I am not going to waste my time on this. Then one day, around the middle of December of that same year, YouTube again recommended a Flat Earth video, and this time I thought, let me see what this crazy people have to say. It was Flat Earth Clues by you. Well, there you go. About as crazy as it gets. I have to admit that I immediately got engaged and you were making a lot of sense. Needless to say, I continued to watch all of them and I was hooked. I can honestly say that on that day I became a Flat Earther, but I was not comfortable admitting it yet. I started watching video after video and like many others became obsessed with the whole idea. This is the most amazing discovery I have come across. I would like to ask if you considered that the elite may be the one who has frozen Antarctica in order to keep us out. There are ancient maps that show no ice in Iceland and parts of Greenland as well as in Antarctica. Could Hart be involved in this? Have you heard of snow put together, put against a lighter and not, against a lighter and not melting? Oh, yeah. There are videos about this and on YouTube. I would like to know your thoughts on this. Thanks, Alma Ortega. Well, Alma, I don't, th no, I don't, th now, could they be, could they be adding more snow and ice to Antarctica? Sure, using the HARP program, why not? But I think that Antarctica 
at least in, during our civilization, not the old maps that show it without snow. Who knows what civilization those things are from? Those really weird, super accurate ones were showing South America. The coastlines are all re very, very accurate. Like it was pencil, like stenciled in from a, from a map. Do I think that Antarctica, that, that we created all the snow and ice Antar on Antarctica? No, not unless we, Harp also has the ability to time travel because ice and snow has been a natural reinforcement that has kept people. If there was no snow on Antarctica, we would have had explorers down there going inland a lot faster than we did. It's been there for a long time since wooden ships with sails. It's been there for a long time. So, again, is it possible, I wake up every day with flat earth, so I'm not going to shoot down your idea entirely. Is it possible they've been adding snow recently? Yeah, maybe. But before then, the, it's, it's just pretty safe to say it's always been there, at least during our civilization. I'm not going to talk about uh, previous stuff. Who's next? This one's called Add to... The last email, Bethune. I realized I did not name the individual in the video I'm looking to speak with. Clarify, you can connect me with Trevor Eugene Purvis, born in 1974. Oh, from a very old Strange World interview I did on Graham Bethune, where I was interviewing his grandson, Trevor Purvis. You could pass along my information to my last email, Trevor C. Would mind contacting me. Thank you for your time. Oh, okay. I'll see if I can put the, those two guys together. This one's got no subject. Hi, I play World of Warcraft. It's a great opening line. And I'm in your guild, a.k.a. Alistair Fiend. Oh, all right. I was a heavy metal dude in the 80s, which isn't surprising by my username. Anyway, I was wondering on how you like the new expansion. I love it, even though I'm just a casual player now. I also played all the games in the 80s. I also loved a game called Dark Tower. So fun. The late 90s, I played Magic the Gathering. Wow, this guy's really on the same page with me because I played Magic the Gathering with, with some of my super nerd friends. I never owned a Magic the Gathering card. Never actually made it, but I, I played with them and I loved the, the potential combinations. I made a 110 card deck that was basically walls and artifacts, but that's a whole other story, uh, which couldn't be beaten. Anyway, at one time I was one of the best players in the world. Wow. Then my Magic cards got stolen. Oof. Lost thousands of dollars worth and that ended it for me. I had some family members get me into PC gaming and played all the FP first-person shooter games till I discovered World of Warcraft in the BC era and never looked back. I got into Flat Earth from Joe Rogan, of all people, with his moon hoax rants. Then a video was recommended to me. It was the interview with Math Powerland, which blew my mind. Yep, that was the same one that blew my mind as well, where he sat down sober. And get remember, that was not, it was not him that was inspired that bit. That was his girlfriend. She was the one that, that sat him down. You could tell. She was like dragged him down. It's like, don't drink, sit on the couch. I'm going to film you, tell your story. And she asked him questions. And that's what opened the door for, for me and a whole bunch of other people. Because it was, it was one of those spooky stories that he wasn't rambling and getting all emotional. He was very calm and collected. I wish he'd do it again. But as you know, over the last 10 years, he's been getting more and more erratic just kind of all, hey, I know he's an entertainer, he's a painter, he's an actor, he's a singer, he's all these things. But, oh, God, I wish he'd focus sometimes and really tell the story again. He's only told the story once, as far as I know, on camera. Name names at this point. What do you got to lose? Yeah, he, he knows my, my pitch. Uh, you might not... Uh, let's see. My, and then you and Eric DeBay really sold me on this. I did talk to you once on the phone back in the summer of 2015. You might not remember me. I get a lot of phone calls, probably don't. But I was working as a manager for this oil changing company in Ohio and had a customer who looked to be in his 80s. Well, I noticed uh, he had uh, this military styled Antarctica hat on. So I asked him where he got it and he said his son gave it to him. I talked to him while my stupid team was having trouble resetting his oil change light. And he said his son was a helicopter pilot and loved to scare the new recruits by flying sideways through the wall to get to the base. What? I never read this. I was like mind blown at what he told me. I told this to Patricia Steer on Facebook, but she didn't seem interested in it like I did. Anyways, just wanted to say hi and glad to know you and happy to be in your guild. You're very welcome, uh, Alistair. 
and glad to have you in the Warcraft Guild, which is called, the guild is called Flat Earth. I did not come up with it. That was Brian from Humana Story that created the guild and then made me guild leader. So thank you for your, your brief history on that. Interesting story about the Antarctica guy. Love those things. Make my day. This one's from Chris. Hi. Okay, Flat Earth Theory. Wait, I already read this. The anomalies can always get one must come to conclusion. Uh, you two, yep, yep. I already, why did I have two of those? That's weird. He sent me two emails on two different two different days. It happens sometimes. I'm not editing this out. This one's from Jay. Jay writes, uh, if my machine would actually catch up. Hey, Mark, while waiting Awaiting your response, something else occurred to me, and I've not seen this addressed by Dubay, Hendries, you, who's Hendries? You or anybody. And as I say this, I'm still pro-FE. Considering that the, the Earth is about 25,000 miles in circumference and about 8,000 miles in diameter, is going up in a balloon to 10 miles altitude or even 200 miles for the ISS really going to let us see what the shape of the Earth really is? No! I, and I'm going to follow the, the guy that called in instead of calling him Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm going to say, NGT says... I am reminded of Dr. Picard in 1931, who said at 9 to 10 miles up from his balloon, he could see the Earth was flat and had a rim to it. I wonder what he really saw. The two civilian astronauts I mentioned in my book, QES, QES who flew to the ISS and the, uh, said the Earth was round. Here's my point. Even the flat Earth has a round edge to it. And how high up would we have to go to see if the roundness was due to a spherical Earth or just the round edge of the FE? Is 200 miles above an 8,000 mile expanse really up high enough? I don't think so. If you graph that, 200 out of 8,000 is a mere 3% of the distance above the surface. Would you see the curvature of a spherical Earth or the curve of the FE? And something else I discuss in QES, NASA discovered an energy barrier at 7,200 miles above the Earth. Is that the firmament? And would we not have to go, say, 1,000 miles above the surface to see what the shape really is? Can we go that high, or is the firmament lower than 7,200 miles? This fascinates me, as it is proof that we are not alone, our actions are being watched, and we should be more responsible. Earth is a school where we learn to be appropriate, my key message. Now, in a different tone, something that is recently pissing me off is Amazon. Since I put up the QES with Flat Earth and Amazon refuses to show what is in the book. The table of contents in the Look Inside feature does not so ch show Chapter 11 in the FE, so I guess I am in good company with those who get rejected by normal society and just know that the Flat Earth is nonsense. You, uh, Mark, Eric, and I... Are the, and the rest of the flat earthers will have the last laugh, however. Humans can be really dumb and resistant, like trying to punch a hole in the firmament with atomic bombs and rejecting serious proof. I no longer call it evidence of the flat earth. Gad, no wonder we make such little progress in this world. I no longer call it a planet either. As one weirdo to another, if I may be so bold, keep up the good work and maybe one day enough people will listen, hopefully before they create the new world order. Cheers, Jay. P.S. My offer to send you a copy of QES still stands. Last email. I have to email this guy because I don't remember the first ones, but that's okay. Next one is from... Who's it from? Devin. Hello, Mark. I was viewing some of NASA's photos today, trying to adjust my thinking. That's when it hit me. They're viewing images under a microscope slightly out of focus. If I had to guess, it would be the national model, 163, description below. I bought a microscope similar to this uh, off eBay a few years ago, and my son and I uh, use it to look at anything and everything we can. A microscope or a telescope? I think he means telescope. No? Tel telescope? Nope, we'll see. Jupiter looks like a piece of wood, oh, microscope, or layered rock or some sort under magnification. Mars looked like a marble under magnification. Venus looks, again, like some type, type of rock under magnification. They all appear to be images of rocks or other objects magnified and then brought slightly out of focus. Interesting. This also explains a spherical shape as it is what the objects appear as through the lens apparatus. Are these micro images and not macro ones? That's one of the most original things I've I've heard in 2017. Would love to talk if you get the time, Devin. A description of microscope. It is a microscope. National model 163. 
This is an advanced research grade microscope with two eyepieces for the research and a third port on the top for mounting a camera called a trinocular head. Trinocular, that's a great word. It has four objective lenses with powers of 40, 100, 400, and 1000 X, and again is a biological microscope with the illuminator under the stage. It uses a more sophisticated light focusing beam under the stage called an ABB, A-B-B-E, condenser. Interesting. Very interesting. Never heard that before, where you take, that wouldn't actually surprise Matt Boylan at all, that you take pictures of physical objects, then pull them out of focus. Therefore, they are actual physical, they, they are physical, not a painting. So that's, that's brilliant. It's really, really good. All right. This one's called, the title of this was called, Jizo, it's flat. Hi, Mark. I, it's been six months since I've lived in this flat earth, and I'm just sending you this message to thank you for your flat earth clues for making it easier for a trans transition for me and my wife. I've always been interested in paranormal and conspiracies, but never delved into these much until off work with illness and bedridden for a couple of months and found the world of YouTube. Ghosts, UFOs, 9-11, Sandy Hook, etc., and I've been following your growing video and interviews. Keep in mind, by the way, it's tough for me to read because there's no paragraph breaks in this. It's just one big wall of text. Uh, following your growing video with posts like, I found Flat Earth the same way as most laughing at, at even the thought of it eventually clicking on one expecting to watch 30 seconds and switch off. Luckily, or maybe unlucky, as, as it was the start of weeks of trying to get as much information as possible and facts on the matter. My wife always watched different conspiracy documentaries with me and usually came away with the same way of thinking and bringing this up was a different matter. A decided your flat earth clues was the best way to explain things to her since we had already watched Admiral Byrd and his expeditions to the mysterious Antarctica. His involvement in flat earth would help, period. She was shocked as each clue was shown and stopped to check out facts after each, pictures of earth, curvature, southern hemisphere flight paths and basically said same things as me what why and how is this possible and what do we do over the last few months we have both spread the word made mistakes mentioning flat earth straight away was one but must happen to most of us but the best thing we have done and have great success with is telling people we have watched a YouTube video and can't debunk this crazy idea this gives people the thought that they will debunk it easy this is when I mention your clues as it gives them information as best as possible without sounding crazy. This seems to have been our best way of expanding our group so far. The only reason we have took to this so-called conspiracy is basically the facts and not just our belief in the matter and the only one and the biggest that would win in a court of law just with a zero curvature and how far we can see. Anyway, we were just wondering if there were any clues online we could join to hear similar sto cl clues clubs online we could join to hear similar stories or new ideas on the matter we listen to your show on youtube would listen live but we stay in scotland and time difference and work following day makes it difficult again thanks for your input into flat earth and hope to hear a lot more from you robert and louise okay for robert and louise here's what i'm going to do anyone wants to contact these guys they're in scotland you guys want to put together a Scotland group, I'm going to start giving out more and more emails for, for people. If you're emailing me and you want to get in a group, I'm going to take the liberty and put it out there. So you want to get in touch with these, these two people, you can contact Lou Star, L-O-U-S-T-A-R at iCloud.com. Boy, that, was, that email drove me insane. There was literally no paragraphs in that whole thing. How much time? We still got more. This one is from nobody. One conscience. There's, there's no, that, that's, that's all I got. My question is regarding the firmament. So we live on our enclosed plane with the stars and universe in the firmament and space is the waters above the earth. Then above the firmament that contains the universe and other planes of higher vibration is sort of another dome and above that would be the creator. Also, does each higher plane have its own enclosed dome world also? And do you think the universe itself is inside the vast firmament? Yes, I do. I, well, because I don't believe in the universe. I think it's just, is there a universe when you go into a planetarium? You're looking at a universe. You're looking at what science tells you a universe, but it's just an image up on a screen. When it comes to anything outside of this firmament, I try to tell people to live one world at a time. 
You're, you can only be in one place at one time. You're here. So don't try to think about how many different places are outside of here. You want to think about the universe and other planets and other, that's fine, but try not to. If you believe in the flat earth, the, the, don't don't speculate too much. Remember, we still got to figure this place out first before we start thinking about how many other worlds are out there. Are there other hit, other hidden lands? Yes, of course, there's other hidden lands. Is there a ferment or is there a ferment? That's yet to be determined. I firmly believe in it. Ah, see what I did there? Firmly believe. But love where you're thinking. Let's move on. This one's from Ariel. And hi, my name is Ariel. My friend recently messaged you asking you to mention any group in your radio show and said you accepted. Amazing. Oh, yeah. The Facebook page, Amazing Flat Earth. Shill free. I just want to say thank you a lot. I'm trying to create a successful group with no trolls or shills, trying to store everyone, stir everyone up and disinform, disinform people, those who do not get banned immediately. Thank you much. You are wonderful. Flat Earth forever. Love, Ariel. And there's a picture of Ariel. And I'm not going to show it to you on this. She sent it to me privately, but the, she's attractive. This one is called International Space Station. Hi, I've been researching the flat Earth for the fl last few months now. I've been I've seen the private rocket hitting the firmament at 73 miles high on YouTube. I've seen the ISS fly over Ireland with my eyes. The ISS is supposed to be cruising at 216 miles high. I believe that nothing can go outside the firmament or the Van Allen belt. My question is, how is the ISS and the Hubble telescope flying around the Earth? Is it possible that they can hold altitude at 70 miles high or did they break out of the firmament? Hope you can help here. Regards. E A M O N N Iman Iman Jennings. I do not believe that the I, there's something up there. No question. Is is it a U two spy plane modified to kind of display or some other spy plane to display the ISS? Don't know. There are things flying up there. A lot of things. In fact, if you get night vision binoculars, you'll see a lot more stuff. And it is not the United States government or any other space agency. These things have been around there, up there for a long, long time. It's something I've, I've mentioned several times in interviews, and that is how can I believe in anything that goes on in the I, as far as the ISS goes if they're faking the interior footage? The interior footage is so horrible that if you're faking the interior footage, you're doing it because you can't put people up there. If you can't put people up there, then whatever you're showing up there that's flying above us, you know, a physical model of the ISS that you're simulating. I don't know how exactly they're doing it. Could it be a, a high altitude balloon? You know, could it be a spy plane? Could it be a modified special project that we don't know about? Very, very possible. When it, but nobody's broke. In my opinion, nobody's ever broken out of the firmament. Not yet. That's the whole point of the firmament is to keep a barrier there. This one's called moon landing question. What about the mirrors that were supposedly <laughs> placed on the moon? <laughs> this is from Richard. Richard, if you're listening to this, don't believe it. I know that Mythbusters did a story where they were going after people that didn't believe in the Apollo programs. And the entire culmination, the pinnacle of their show, I think it was a one-hour show, was they fired a laser at the moon, supposedly hit the mirror reflectors, and it sent back a few photons, and it registered at an observatory, and they gave, they gave each other high fives, like, look, we just proved it. Yeah, whatever. Uh, you, you don't even worry about the, the mirrors. Look at the, was it the Globex? Google X. Globe X? Google X project where supposedly five space teams have until the end of 2017 to launch a robot probe to the moon and beam back pictures. <laughs> Let me know what happens there. That's, that's what I'm going to be focusing on this year. As far as the mirrors, boy, you've got a long way to go. But thank you for writing in. This one's from, it's called Flat Earth Map, help please. It's from Vernon Roop. Never known anyone with the last name of Roop, R-O-O-P. I've been doing lots of research on Flat Earth. Please, by the way, anyone that writes in, please include paragraph breaks. I don't care if you don't like it, just hit enter a few times. Put some paragraph breaks in there. I've been doing lots of research on Flat Earth and I'm convinced it is flat. Some friends of mine recommended I watch some of the videos and stuff that you created. You seem to be one of the true Flat Earth leaders. Oh, that's awfully nice. However, I came up with an idea that I need help with and I, 
think you would be someone who has the resources to make this happen. I noticed some people complaining about the model of flat earth not really matching up properly due to the stretching and shrinking beyond the equator to the south. For instance, the size of Australia being way too long. I was playing around on Google Maps and realized that when we zoomed all the way and you're looking at a picture and high definition of the earth being flat, but only the one small little square section of it. I don't understand that. Uh, then it dawned on me. What if I was to take a picture or save the picture from Google, every single one of them that's zoomed in, and then compile oh, and then compile them into one big giant map? Anyway, I have some other ideas with getting it to line up with the longitude and latitude correctly, but when I realized how many pictures I would have to take or save would require a gigantic hard drive. Hopefully you can understand what I'm trying to do, and I think this would be a huge for the Flat Earth map community. Uh, and it might lend some credibility to what we're looking at for real when looking at the map of Flat Earth. Also, I noticed that there were some areas that were actually photoshopped, especially where the water is. And I have some ideas on that, but I'll leave it as at this. If you want something like this done, please contact me again and let me know any ideas for making something like this happen again. Vernon. Interesting idea. I don't personally have the hard drive space to, to deal with. Plus, it would take a whole bunch of time. But I, I like the concept. Like like where you're going with this. I don't know if Google Earth is necessarily going to be the most legitimate thing to, to help us. But it's, it's not a bad idea. Uh, let's see here. Moon theory, moon theory. Thanks for good information on our YouTube channel. This is from Frank. My name is Frank and I live in Copenhagen in Denmark. I have a theory about why the moon always faces the same way to us. I'd like to hear what you might think about it. I will send you some pictures in a video clip. I think that the moon is a solid object spinning in the North Pole by electromagnetism, but is mirrored in the dome. And the sun may be an energy field in the center of the North Pole hitting a mirror or prism, just like a lighthouse, and then hitting the dome. Oh, interesting to where the moon and the sun are actually station. I see where he's going. The moon and the sun are actually stationary objects. And that they uh, they, they seem to spin because they're actually projecting the, the, the what we're seeing as a reflection from the from the North Pole and the reflection is just moving around. The question is what's ca what's causing the reflection to move around? Uh, if anyone's interested in contacting this guy out in Denmark, you could probably email him at Frank ARP at iCloud.com. If anyone's interested, he's got a couple of videos. You mentioned that that I met, I talked about this on the Q and A show twenty one. Uh, if anyone wants his videos, I'm sure he'll send it. They're fairly small, but Frank ARP at iCloud.com. How much time do we have? We got a few more. This one's called what? Tonight is the night, Mark. I'll be calling it a strange world at last, a place where truth is stranger than fiction and moreover a place with a collective community of decent folks being more enthusiastic and open to topics of reality than most sheeple are even close to realizing and accepting. Seeing a world with different eyes makes drastic effects on a person's life. I know it did not mine. And by the way, the earth is flat. If you haven't heard, Mr. Sergeant, talk to you tonight. This is one of the guys that calls into the show. He was just writing and asking me, when's the show? Cool. This one's called Obama's Mocking. That's from Matt. From some WikiLeaks emails I've read, I say that Obama's famous flat earth comments are directed towards global warming deniers that hold political offices and oppose the carbon tax agenda. I would also like to ask if you have seen Snowden's Citizen Four and noticed anything hidden in the fake documentary. I have, but I think a certain filter or graphic solution had to be used to decipher it. I'll give give you the when and where in the movie if you're interested in looking into it. Great work, Matt. I have not watched Snowden Citizen 4. I, I've watched some stuff on Snowden, but I have not watched that particular one. So if you have details on that, please send them to me. I'd love to see it. The Swans from Joseph solid compilation video he sent me a link it's called flat earth truth does not fear investigation oh yeah excellent excellent I, in fact i was it's great you mentioned that because i just caught i just watched that the other day the entire thing it's about 40 minutes long it's very very good where uh, it's a it's a great compilation flat earth thing and i'm going to include it in my flat earth uh short list for new people it's great 
check it out if you get a chance. Flat Earth, Truth Does Not Fear Investigation. Great compilation. And, and yeah, they used a few little voice clips from me, but not very much. So thank you, Joseph, for that. It's it is good point. Gotta, gotta give props. This one's called, it's a link, leaky NASA helmets during EVAs. How are they getting water leaks while spacewalking? Easy, they're not spacewalking, they're diving. And you can go, and there's a great story on space.com. It's called Spacesuit Water Leak NASA Investigations. Because you know, I'm sure a few people are going, so how are people almost drowning in space exactly? I mean, yeah, of course, of course air conditioning generates some, some, some fluid. Not that much. This one's called South Carolina License Plate. Hi, Mark. Here's my South Carolina plate. Ignore the dent on the lower right side. That's the way I received it. It's, it's, still, it's still a keeper. Keep up the good work, Rick. And I've already used the South Carolina as, I think, the thumbnail for Q&A 20. And I'm going to use the Alberta Canada for this one. So many plates coming in. It's, it, it's encouraging to see the enthusiasm out there and how, how many people are getting into this. This one's called Hey Man. Literally, that's what it's called. I just tried calling you. I had low expectations that you would answer. No big deal, bro. Anyway, I was in the gym yesterday. Shocker, calling me bro in the gym. Yesterday and asked a pilot about the nose dipping issue. He had a response I had not heard. Basically, he says it is thrust that keeps the plane at any altitude. So if the earth were to be curving down in a way, then the plane would just fall with it because the thrust is set to keep the plane at certain altitude. This might be why some pilots are not so quick to go to FE when thinking of the tangential effect, T-A-N-G-E-N-T-I-A-L, effect the falling curve would have on flights at 35,000 feet. I could tell that he was thinking about my question, but not verbally responding, just the look in his eye gave it away. I thought it made a little sense. He did say the word gravity a whole bunch, and I had to bite my tongue on that one. On the funny side, trampoline companies would have a hard time staying in business if the Earth was spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. Excellent point. Thank you, Bob, for that. This one's called It's Flat Alberta Plate. More pl A lot of great, great week for plates. Hi again. As promised, here is the lead, 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 flat Earth license plate for, oh, the lead <laughs> first. Uh, license plate for Alberta, Canada. This is my fourth communication, so I'm feeling like I'm part of the new old guard. On another flat earth consideration, if there is so much money involved in the globe earth conspiracy and some guy named Mark Sargent starts to corner NASA into checkmate, then you will suddenly cut off their money supply. Two things that you would think would happen. One, they get rid of Mark Sargent, or two, they need to replace NASA tax with some other tax or golden goose. I, I'm not worried. At this point, easier for me to say because I don't have, I'm not married, don't have kids, and I'm old enough, you know, and uh, what, what are you going to do? I'm, I'm putting this out there because I feel like I, I have to put it out there, and I've been allowed to put it out there for whatever reason. I have not received any weird phone calls, anybody driving by, any weird emails, no spooky feelings that I've been under duress. My YouTube channel, for the most part, yeah, a few copyright things here and there, but most of them, most of them were deserved. They haven't restricted my movements in, in any way, shape, or form. So whatever they're doing, they don't necessarily mind. I still think that, that Flat Earth is a part of something bigger, but they don't mind us doing it currently. As far as replacing NASA with other tax or golden goose, boy, I don't know what that would be. But thanks for doing the Alberta plate. That's awesome. Time? Yeah, we can do a few more. This one's from, can't tell, Damien? Hello, Mark, my name is Damien, and I would love to ask you for permission of doing Polish dubbing of your Flat Earth Clues. Let me tell you why I prefer to do that rather than add Polish subtitles onto your clips. The reason is simple. Just as on January 22nd this year, some Polish YouTuber came out with some uh, disproving Flat Earth. He was referring to the movie where allegedly Dave is talking on TV. Unfortunately, in my country, this clip is most popular. It's posted on a few channels, and now there's that guy who runs his own channel about physics and stuff, and I have to tell, if one year ago after watching Dave and let's say only that, that 
and you're watching this guy's clip, I wouldn't become a flat earther. Okay. And this is a serious problem because not that many of Polish people talk English. And many, uh, they even just prefer watching things in Polish. It really bothers me, man. After I watched that BS video of his, I was furious. So let me know, let me know if I can make dubbing with my own voice. Of course, all credits will be yours. And I wrote him back and I said, yeah, absolutely. You can, you can write and, and, or you can, you can do this thing in Polish. I don't care what language it's, it's creative commons license. Take the clues. And if you want to read it, if you want to read the whole things in a different language, let me know. Just send me a copy. Send me a link of it because my book publisher would love to get a hold of it because we do audio versions and different languages are always helpful. So thank you very much for that. And I think we can do one more. One more. Hi, Mark. Tuesday, you had someone from Utah that wanted to connect with other Flat Earth people in Utah. He gave an email address, but it was not working or something was wrong with it. I think he is just he was just nervous and said it wrong. But I am the one with the It's Flat license plate, Utah, and have talked with you before. Anyway, next week, you might mention on the air his email address was wrong. He said GTOL5929 at gmail.com, but it errors. Anyway, I thought I would let you know, Jacob. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give out Jacob's email address and hopefully these, you guys can, can, can meet up and I'll, as I get more, I'll, I'll read them more. Anyone that wants to do meetups, I'm going to read your email and hopefully you can get in contact with people in your area. So as far as Utah goes, Jacob in Utah is at, that's a simple email, ss at allwest.net. Is that right? I'm going to respond, hit reply to that, see if it still comes up. Scott Simmons. Oh, Scott Simmons. Duh. At ss at allwest.net yeah so there you go thank you very much for everyone that wrote in this time i'm going to try to keep up i'm beginning more and more emails as this thing keeps growing and growing i know one day i'm not gonna be able to do emails forever because it just becomes a losing battle but i keep trying as long as i have time and, and breath and my voice holds out I will do them. If you want to email me with questions or comments or whatever, I will, as long as it's not too long, if it's, remember, keep it within a page if you can. The email address is msargent23 at comcast.net. Thanks guys, and we'll see you next time.